Hey folks, great you're watching again and welcome to this English summary. Well today, Evo has been helping in the workshop. Um, well, because they, uh, Ivo and Bram, they are almost finished with their intern. Um, well, they had some several days uh, left. And they also wanted to be uh, on this side of the camera and to help out in the workshop. So that's, uh, well, that's a welcome help, of course. So that's, uh, that's great. Um, good. What have we been doing today? Um, well, check my list, I think. Yes. Uh, at first we have been busy with the uh, connecting rods of the engine uh, because we want to uh, disassemble those uh, in order to remove the pistons from the cylinders and so we can pull out the cylinder sleeves uh, which are well too badly rusted and we might be able to repair the rest of them so well, therefore we have to remove the uh, pistons and open up the piston rods. Um, well, as you have seen before, um, uh, these are held together by some really particular um, nuts. Um, these are like, uh, yeah, like spline or uh, uh, multi-teeth nuts. Uh, well, there, there's not uh, just a regular tool uh, which you can purchase to, uh, well, to loosen these. Um, so I have been checking in the warehouse uh, what kind of um, spline shafts and connectors that I have from steering columns from uh, cars. Uh, because they, those are also use uh, spline, uh, yeah it's not a nut of course, but a spline shaft and then the, the coupler uh, has also a spline. And uh, well, maybe we have one which uh, fits our nuts over there, we can make a tool uh, with that. So we have been trying to find the correct size, but no, didn't find it. Um, we also found one uh, socket on the internet, um, and well, it turns out uh, I've ordered one, still haven't got it, but uh, that turns out uh, to be 33 teeth, and the one we need is 34. And the other one is 42 teeth. So, well, there's not a regular uh, socket I can purchase uh, just like that to open uh, this up. So, well, we have to fix something uh, ourselves. Um, I have uh, drawn the um, uh, contour, the, the, uh, the out, uh, outline of the uh, nuts uh, in Saltworks. So we can uh, have a, cool, uh, a tool cut uh, maybe by uh, water jet cutting or otherwise uh, the, 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 the wire. Um, what name was it? Ivo, you know it? Yeah, I've been. Is it a water jet or. Yeah. Laser? Uh, no, 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 not laser. Laser is. Uh, uh, I think a laser is not. Um, accurate enough on uh, thicker plates um, what the jet is and um, the other one is with oh well it's with a wire I'm not sure uh, wire cutting I, well I don't think that's the correct name Draadvonken that's the Dutch name you might search for that um, anyway uh, it's a really uh, difficult thing to measure because well it's still inside of the crankcase so my caliper does not really fit well in there um, I did my best and I measured the dimensions uh, counted the teeth several times to be sure uh, I have them all um, well then I have drawn this tool in Saltworks and we want to uh, have a few samples laser cut uh, out of thinner material so we can check our drawing so if that's fine we can make one out of thicker material and well then it will, it will do properly so well that about the uh, the nuts and well let's see what was there. of course 
Well, then, uh, Matthijs Ten Hagen uh, came to visit us. And Matthijs, he also has a YouTube channel. Uh, you might want to check it out. We have uh, put a link in the description of the, uh, the, the video or the vlog uh, site, of course. Um, he makes all kind, uh, all kind of videos about welding and uh, also fixing stuff. So it's nice, maybe uh, you would like to check it out, of course. So, uh, and he saw the video where we uh, said to, uh, we were going to sell the scooter, the, the Rapido we used for the, the snow scooter project. Uh, I built it uh, back together as a regular scooter. And well, and he uh, wanted to have it for, well, maybe he's going to make a project of it. So I would check out his channel. Um, after that, uh, he. Um, uh, Matthijs, he has several uh, degrees in uh, welding um, and he wants to try out our uh, welder. So, well, we have uh, welded some, uh, some things to, well, uh, yeah, to check out. So, well, uh, that's about it, I guess. Um, let me see. Oh yeah, we have been doing more. The uh, injectors, of course. Uh, the injectors. Uh, I had put them in a solvent in order to uh, dissolve the clog from the nozzles. Uh, they clogged. Uh, the, the spray pattern is not uh, not good, so we have to clean them. Uh, I don't have an ultrasonic cleaner that might help, but um, I wanted to see if we could use some things we have over here. And then one of you said you should put them in brake fluid because well, the brake fluid is very aggressive, and maybe that solves the uh, well. The, the, I'm not sure what it is called, I guess, but it also can be rust, and then it will be uh, harder to to get rid of probably. Well, so um, we tried this. Uh, well, and when I saw the comment. <laughs> I ran off the workshop, I took, uh, I took three of those uh, injectors, I put them in brake fluid uh, and now we tried one but it didn't really help. It, uh, well, they're still in there so maybe uh, we can try it later today so that will be tomorrow for the video. Uh, well, it was a good idea but uh, well, it, it didn't work uh, also. Um, okay, good. Well then, I got a price list of the um, parts for the BMP. Um, uh, many of you have been asking, well, what, what are the prices of, of these parts? So, uh, well, then I took this uh, price list uh, and explained what prices uh, we, we got. I'll get them for you. Um, <coughs> let me see. Uh, a set of fenders. Uh, is a thousand euros. So that's, those are the, uh, the skirts, I think. Uh, these are complete, so that's from the front to the back. Um, b has uh, skirts on the side, it's a little bit like the uh, Type 69, only these ones are not from uh, rubber. This is sheet metal pressed with shapes in it to get it more rigid. Okay. Um, well then, the clutch plates, um, then we're talking about the friction plates, so not the metal plates, but these are the plates with the friction material on it. Um, those are 100 euros each, uh, we need two of those. Then we have the, the belly plate, and that's the one with, um, yeah, with, with the shaft sticking out of it. Um, what's, that's the, the end plate, it's the pressure plate. I think that's the correct name for it. Um, that's 100, um, oh, no, 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 250 euros. Um, we need one. Then we have the intermediate plates. We need one of those for the clutch. Uh, this is 150 euros. Um, so well, that's that's for about the clutch. Mm, then uh, we also got some track connectors and track screws uh, offered. Um, the connectors, you have the track plates, uh, which contain the track pins, and the track plates uh, are held together by the connectors, and those are the small parts uh, on the outside, on which also the sprocket hooks onto. So, these connectors are 20 euros each. Uh, but lucky enough, we don't have one which are missing, but we have one where, where the track screws are missing, and um, the track screws 
also have been offered uh, for 10 euros each. Um, so, well, that's, um, yeah, well, we, we, don't, we don't need a lot of them, so that's a good thing. Um, the gearbox shaft, well, that's the, the spline shaft, which is uh, a little bit worn out, uh, is uh, 350 euros. So, well, that's not too bad. Uh, that's, <laughs> I think that's a lot cheaper than a complete new gearbox. Uh, and I don't think we can make this part for that uh, amount of money. Uh, cylinder sleeves, uh, 250 euros uh, each. I'm not sure how many we need. For this we have to remove the pistons first and see which one can be repaired. Uh, we will need uh, several probably. Well then, piston rings uh, are 20 euro each. Um, 18 in total is 360 euros for all piston rings of this uh, engine. Um, then valve seats, uh, 45 euro each. Uh, we need 24 if we want to replace all of them. But I think we can repair several of them. Uh, we don't have to yeah, order them all. Uh, and then we have the head gaskets. Um, yeah. I'm not sure about this one. Um, well, it says uh, those are 300 euro each. We need two of them, but we don't have actually had gaskets. Uh, it has these copper rings and also uh, rubber rings. Um, we uh, had these rubber rings um, made for the Type 69. Um, I well, I just have drawn them and they have been cut out of Viton uh, rubber uh, which is uh, really capable of um, uh, well uh, bearing heat so it um, if you have on NBR rubber just a natural uh, rubber uh, that can burn out pretty quick um, but uh, Viton is uh, well it can take up uh, higher temperatures so that's so that's good for this head gasket thing. Um, for the uh, main head gaskets for the Type 69, uh, those are aluminium. I, um, well, I just drew uh, these in SolidWorks and have them cut uh, out of uh, aluminium. So we, we, yeah, we reproduced all, the, all of these parts. So um, yeah, and this, this one is even much easier. So I think uh, we will, um, well, for this price, we can make those by ourselves. Um, okay, uh, yeah, and then he had some uh, wheels also, the road wheels, uh, 250 euro each. So we have on the other side of the vehicle, um, well the side which you see all the time, those wheels are pretty good, but on the other side we have some wheels which are pretty bad. So I think we have to replace some, on, uh, some there. Okay. Well, and then we, we proceed working on the gearbox um, because uh, as we have uh, told, we are going to replace one of the outgoing shafts uh, because this uh, spline is worn out. Um, therefore, we remove the steering uh, hub. Um, it contains um, a reduction, a planet gear reduction uh, and also uh, disc uh, brake, disc clutch and also band brake on the outside. So first we move the uh, band brake and actuator, then we uh, open up all the bolts and slide the uh, complete uh, reduction out. Um, well then we were talking about how this reduction actually works. Um, well it's the same system as uh, Type 69, only on the Type 69 on the D55. Um, this uh, hub is, um, is um, uh, a separate unit and for the BMP it's integrated in the gearbox which I prefer most because well it just uses the gearbox oil and it's uh, also uh, sealed nice away. You only have one band brake which goes uh, on the outside and that's also the main uh, brake. Um, you have uh, two brakes um, one is uh, just the main brake you use for stopping uh, the vehicle or for blocking one track. Uh, then you have a brake which actually breaks the uh, planet bearer. Um, when you have a, um, a planetary gear, you have a, a ring gear 
Uh, then you have the planet gears. Those are the ones uh, on the uh, uh, you know, spinning, spinning around on the planet bearer. And then you have the mill gear or sun gear, as it is called sometimes. Um, well, how this thing works, uh, it's pretty easy. Uh, when you are just driving uh, forward, full speed, uh, so there's no reduction activated, this uh, ratio is just one on one. The um, reduction is uh, blocked, so it's, it acts like, uh, um, like a shaft. So the uh, planet bearer is locked and the uh, brake is loose. Um, so as soon as, soon as you uh, start steering, first position, it will uh, activate the reduction and how, how does this work? It uh, releases the planet bear and it locks the uh, ring gear. Uh, so what happens now is the reduction starts working, the planet bear starts spinning and the outgoing shaft is uh, the, the RPMs are lower than the ingoing shaft. Well, then if you uh, steer more uh, or well use the, the, the boat's levers for braking well this one does not have two levers it has like a T, T shaped steering device but anyway if you uh, do the short turn so it blocks one, uh, one track what happens then if it uh, activates the band brake so it blocks the outgoing shaft and then it opens the clutch and it also opens this brake, so the ring uh, wheel and the planet bearer are running free. Uh, so the ingoing shaft is completely disconnected from the outgoing shaft. So the planet bearer is, is rotating, um, but this uh, the force cannot be transferred to the outgoing shaft because this ring gear is also spinning. So well, this is how it uh, can dis disengage and block one outgoing shaft. So that's pretty much how it works. Okay, good. Oh well, that's about it, I guess. Yes, thank you for watching and see you next time.